So here we have the Casio FX991ES Plus calculator, selling for about £15, with a wealth of useful features for higher, advanced higher, university. This time I want to look at the matrix features on it with a couple of examples. An example of finding the solution to a set of simultaneous equations. The matrix connection being I'm going to form a augmented matrix with it. Well, the first we'll think about this. Here we go. Here's a parabola. Y equals AX squared plus BX plus C. If we're given three points on it, I can then form three simultaneous equations involving A, B and C like this. So putting in the values of X and Y for each of the three points. So that you've got three equations and three variables or writing that as an augmented matrix, just putting in these coefficients. Using the calculator to solve that system of equations, well, switching it on. Now, it won't actually be the matrix functions I'm going to be using because this calculator only handles matrices up to a dimension of 3 by 3. It won't handle a 3 by 4. But there's another mode, I'm pressing the mode, that will handle that, and that's the equation mode, number 5. So if you enter 5, it comes up with four different types of equations it will solve. Number 1, a system of equation in two variables, so you'll enter two equations there. Number two, the one I want, a system of equation with three variables. Number three, quadratics, and even handier, number four, cubic equations. And with three and four, it will also give you the roots, whether they're real or imaginary. So in three and four, you can get the complex roots split into the two parts. Unfortunately, just as decimals, though, it doesn't actually give you in the forms of subs and so on, where you would like that to be the case. Then, how would I enter this? So enter, press 2, because I want the second of those. And up it comes with, you can see the way it's already set out. It's been set out as a matrix. So obviously it's using some matrix algorithm to solve that system of equations. And then you just enter it. Make sure you start at the top there. out. So putting the first one in, 4. Making sure it's at the start where it says A. So 4, press enter, puts it in. Negative 2, press enter, 1. 4, then it jumps back to the next line, 4, 2, 1, 2, jumps back to the following line, 16, 4, 1, 4, pressing one equal one last time, make sure that that's been entered, I've got a 4 there. So that's the system entered into it, you can scroll back and forth as light, press equals again, and up it comes with the answers. It's calling the answers x, y and z, so what it's saying here is then that x is a quarter, that's the same as saying that A is a quarter, so it's got A equals a quarter. Scroll down. B says Y is negative a half. And scroll down again, C is 2. So there is, there's the solution to that set of equations. So the problem would have been Y equals a quarter X squared minus a half X plus 2. So that was using the equations part of it rather than the matrix part. Using the equations part which had this sort of analogue of the augmented matrix where you might have used the Gaussian elimination matrix proper though. Here's a case actually using matrices. I've got two 3x3 three three matrices here and we go through various operations on them using the, the matrix mode in this. So the first part would be, clear it if you like, press mode, matrix number six and it comes up straight away with a choice of three matrices that I can then dimension and insert values into. There's only three there will actually be four matrices you can have on the go because equivalent to the answer memory for normal calculations, there's an answer memory for the matrices. So there'll be a matrix answer which can also be used, but there's three that you can input directly and remain saved in the memory. Unless you accidentally do shift all clear, because if you power it down, you lose everything. So you have to watch that combination. Right, matrix A, how would you enter matrix A? Well, once you've, once you've pressed mode, and it's come up with matrix, question mark. I'll press 1 for matrix A, and it'll ask me for a dimension. Number 1 is a 3 by 3. Now I've got a 3 by 3 matrix, and now I can input the data. So I'll just put these numbers in. 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. Not continue the same pattern, because then the bottom row would be the same as the top, and that would be no use for determinants and so on. So I have to carry on. 2, 2, 1. Make sure you press this final equals. It's not been entered yet. Press the final equals so you can see that final one written below and then you can safely press all clear because that's been stored in the memory in the matrix part of it as matrix A. Now for matrix B, rather than do the mode again, I can now use the matrix button properly. It's down here at number 4. Shift 4 opens the matrix memory. 
If I want to enter matrix B, don't press 4, which says matrix B, because I'll try and call out matrix B, which will have nothing in it. I'll just come up error. I'll have to start with 1, which is to dimension it. So 1. Matrix. I'm going to call it B this time, so that's number 2. What size do I want it? I want it to be a 3 by 3. That's number 1. Enter the data. Well, that's that trivial daft one, isn't it? I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Kind of sort of nonsense you put down like QWERTY because it just rattles off the keyboard. But of course it just forms a matrix that's got multiple redundancy in it. Still, that's not the point of it just now. Make sure you've pressed that final equal. So there's a 9 there. I can now safely press all clear. Both of them are now stored in there. If I want to recall matrix A, I do shift matrix to enter the matrix part of it. Matrix A is under number 3. I press 3. If I press equals, there is, is matrix A again. Where you go, call it back if you want. Do the same with B. And here's where it starts to get handy. It's quite a tedious process multiplying matrices. To do A times B, all I would do would be pop into the matrix, find A, that was 3, do multiply, pop into the matrix, find B, that was number 4, call it out, press equals, and there's your answer. Take a wee note of that, just so I can compare it with something in a minute. That says 16, 20, 24. It's quite a handy thing here. Moving the cursor about produces the answer to that element below. Since they're all whole numbers, it makes no difference. But if they were decimals, down here it would give the rational equivalent, if it had one. Uh, oh, I forgot what I was doing now. Uh, 20, 25, 30, 17, 22, 27. That was A times matrix A times B. Gone. Or is it? Just like the answer function. That was the last matrix calculation I carried out. So if I pop back into the matrix, matrix menu, I like just to call it the matrix. Pop back into the matrix. Number six says matrix answer. So pressing six, matrix answer should give me the last matrix calculated. And there it is, in case I wanted to use that somewhere else. There you go. A squared. What's the square of that matrix? Another tedious calculation. Simply pop into the matrix, pull out matrix A with number 3, and x squared, square it. There you go. There's the square of the matrix. What about cubing? Not quite so simple. There you go. Pop into the matrix, pull out matrix B. That was 4. Now how are you going to do cubed? You might be tempted to do the power button, so I'll do to the power, pop in a 3 and see what happens. Doesn't work, doesn't like that. And I'd do the same if you tried 4, 5, 6. So I can only get a squared directly from one of those buttons. But the calculator does have a cubed on the casing, so trying that instead, pop into the matrix to call it the matrix B, 4, there it is. So if I press shift and then cubed, it'll do that. So you can square it and cube it directly. If you wanted any higher power, you could always, if you wanted a to the 5, you could always do a squared times a to the 3. Right, that's gone. Determinants. So what's the determinant of matrix A? Another tedious calculation. Pop into the matrix. Now, amongst the menu items, you've got seven determinants. So I'll just press 7. This will tell me the determinant of whatever I pop in there. So I'll just pop back in and pull out matrix A. That was number 3. Press equals. And there you are, at the bottom, 3. The determinant of A was 3. Now that means that B should give me a 0. So, shift, pop into the matrix. 7 is determinant. Matrix B, pop back in. And find B, that was number 4. Because those rows are redundant. Each of those rows is a linear combination of the other ones. So the determinant should be 0. Press equals, and it comes to 0. As you'd expect. So that means that a should have an inverse, which I can find quite easily this way. Pop into the matrix. Now, one of, none of these actually say inverse. So what I'll do instead is I'll just take out matrix A. That was number 3. And the, the inverse button up here, X the negative 1, just press that. Matrix, negative 1, equals, and there it is. Now, as you'd expect, it's full of fractions because the determinant was 3. So it's going to be a third of something. So these are all decimals. But the cursor, when it goes over any item, rewrites it as the fraction. So that element there, it's got two thirds at the bottom. Writing it this way though, because there isn't room for it to do it the other way around. So you will get the rational equivalent to them. So that was fine. Notice by having calculated these, that's now gone. That matrix answer holds the last thing you calculated. Now the inverse of B, 
that shouldn't be a surprise. Pop into the matrix, pull out B, well that was number four wasn't it? Try its inverse and it comes up with the error, as you'd expect, because it doesn't have an inverse. What about this calculation at the end? This suspicious looking calculation here. Now I can't type that in directly just now because I can't just put minus three. I'll need that identity matrix in there. So I'll have to set that up. I'll not use C yet. So I could pop into the matrix, pick out one, which will dimension it. I'm going to call C, I want C, so that's number three. I want to dimension it as a three by three, so I pick out one, and I just want the identity matrix. So I'll go one, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one. Yeah, that's now sorted, that's stored in there. Now I could enter this into the matrix menu. Number three was color A. I want cubed, don't try that power button. You'll have to use the shift power three. Minus three times, I don't need the multiplication. Pop in, and that was number three, and I want to square it this time. Minus seven times, pop in, and pull it out. That's matrix A. Minus three times, pop in, and it's C I want to pull it this time. That was number five. Then I press equals. And it comes to all the zeros. It comes to the zero matrix. And that's no surprise because that's actually the characteristic polynomial of equation A. And of course, a matrix must be a solution of its own characteristic polynomials. That's why this thing then came to zero. And there it is, a handy set of functions for matrices and a calculator that only costs about £15.